So this is material that I've gone through in one way or another a couple of times in the past. Once back in 2009, I put together this video about how to do it in Photoshop. And I kind of touch on it in this algorithmic substance designer pixel processor video. Um, and thought we could maybe just take a look at it, how to do it in After Effects. So first I want to just take a stop in uh, Photoshop and explain the basic idea. So if we start with a grad and let's say we take this dot and we pull that out and I'm going to invert it just because I like it inverted. Now I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to fill that layer, edit, fill with 50% gray. Now, um, normally when you have a 50%, you know, blend modes are organized into the darken modes, the lighten modes and the overlay modes, darken, um, white does nothing, lighten, black does nothing, the overlay group, middle gray does nothing. So if I say overlay, you can see that there's the original element underneath. And if I roll down through these overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light, hard, hard mix. Notice that hard mix is suddenly a circle. It's, it's different. So even though hard mix is in the overlay group, it treats middle gray differently. In fact, um, it, it works with all colors in a certain way. And here's what it does. If I say, um, let's say uh, curves and I clip these curves to the gray layer so that I'm just darkening or lightening that. Notice that what it does is it re-thresholds that dot in different ways. So you might recall, if I say Alt, you might recall that what's underneath it is a dot. Now let's say for the fun of it that we have this other radial, this other gradient. Let's start in the middle and pull that out. That's kind of interesting. So if we say Alt again, now if we go back to the curve, you can see that I can turn it like a clock. Oops. Um, there's that. And then down like that. So you, you probably have the idea where this is all going. Um, Alt. I'll do one more. Um, let's see. You know what? Let's do diamond. Or whatever you call it. This guy. I'll flip it around. So, I, you know, it looks like I have it rotated slightly. I didn't pull it straight up. But if I say Alt again, you can see that the curve, what it does is it makes bigger and smaller squares. So let's take a look uh, in After Effects now. Here is a project in After Effects and it has um, dots changing size. And if we zoom in on it, you can get a sense of what it's doing. And you might probably now have an idea what it, what it's doing. I have an array of radial grads and I put that over a mosaic version of the footage. And the reason I do that is because I want the circles to see a constant amount of gray across their entire surface. Because if they see different grays, they will threshold at different amounts and they won't be circles anymore. Let's try a different one. This one is made by gradients that just go from top to bottom. And there's an array of those and they are on a mosaic piece of footage. So if we go in close here, you can see it's almost like, um, you know, graphic equalizers or something. It's kind of interesting. Let's go back to the dots. 
and let's just go through it really fast. So the first thing I start out with is I start out with footage. This particular footage is from Shutterstock. I take the footage and then I create a mosaic of it like that. And you have to figure out how many, you know, circles you want and you have to figure out how many mosaics you have. Like right now I have uh, 42 by 24 mosaics and I have the original footage is 420 by 240 and I blew it up a certain amount. So you can see you have to, you know, you can calculate it so that it, it lines up evenly, makes it easier to work with. And then after I do the mosaic, I have a dot and I make an array of dots like this. That's what that looks like. And of course the um, number of dots in top and then, you know, to the left and to the top have to be the same as the mosaic. And then um, I do the hard mix, which is right here, hard mix mode. And that's where I get that. There's a couple of other things I want to point out. One is the hard mix mode is fundamentally unanti-aliased. It forces things to black or white, depending on the underlying gray and the other image. So I made this really big. As you can see, this is 100%. I made it really big, and then I shrank it down I like four times smaller in the end. So I made it eight times bigger, did the work, and then I made it four times smaller. And that's where I get my nice anti-aliased circles from. You wouldn't get it just from doing it at straight resolution. The second thing that's kind of interesting is if I go back to this footage... And let's lock that so that we can stay there. And let's go back to the original footage and let's turn off the black and white. So you can see what we have is this color. And let's see, there's a kind of a magenta one. And well, let's play it and see what happens. There's some blue tinged ones. So what this does is it does the same exact thing we just saw independently in red and green and blue, and it stacks them all on top of each other. That just happens automatically. All I had to do was turn off the, turn off the black and white thing. And so, you know, if, if you, in this case, you've got a big red circle, a smaller green circle, and that when they pile up, they make yellow, and an even smaller blue circle, and when all three pile up, they make white. And if the blue happens to stick out the most, then you'll get a blue-tinged circle. But that's what that looks like in motion. So I um, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot.